everybody this is Deb with Garden Devotions and today we're going to make a Plarn Kumihimo bracelet this one's going to be round but here I have one that is a chevron a flat chevron braid we're going to do that in another video but for right now we're going to do the round one that you see here okay so yes we're going to get started. Now, if you don't know how to get your Plarn to create Plarn in the first place, you need to see my other video because I show you how to do it and you know how to get it cut up and everything. You're using just regular bags that you get from the grocery store or other stores and you're making a type of yarn that you can use to create things. In the previous video, I showed you a couple different projects you could make, and so this is just another one. You're going to need a few things for a Kumihimo bracelet. Now, if you've never done Kumihimo, you might want to actually try it with yarn first because you can use the same method, just use yarn. But, um, you know, because there are little quirks, a few quirks with the... <laughs> With the plarn but anyway you're going to need a disc a kumihimo disc and this is just a little tiny one that i got that this is kind of my travel one but i use this one specifically with wire or thread so it doesn't pull open these little notches very much but you know they have bigger ones there's another one that i have that's round that's this size well it's actually kind of like this but unfortunately somebody borrowed it and so i don't have that one with me and this requires a round one the flat one is what you would use for the chevron bracelet because it's a flat bracelet okay and so we need a round one and i have a round one but a little tiny little see it's just a little baby <laughs> but it doesn't matter as long as your bracelet would fit you know the width of it would fit here it doesn't matter if you use this one or you use this one it, you know, it really doesn't matter at all. The only difference is this one has a wider slot, so it can make a little wider bracelets if you want that. But anyway, we're going to set the square ones aside, and we're going to hang on to a round one. Now, you can use a round one like this, but uh, this is the only round one I have right now. And again, I use this mostly for wire or for thread or a thin cord because the... If you use the bigger cord, then it kind of wears it, um, you know, makes it bigger. And so then when you try to use the thinner cord or the wire, it doesn't hold it at all. And wire especially is extremely picky. Plus, I need this one. It has 64 spaces. And I need this one for a certain flower, one that I like to do. So um, that's why I have this one. But most Kumihimo, and, and it's real thick, so it does hold the wire a lot better if you're using wire. But most Kumihimo rounds that you're going to find have 32 on them. This one has 32. And again, it doesn't matter if it's this smaller one or if it's a bigger one. It doesn't matter if they have like north, south, east, and west. Anyway, it doesn't matter if it has those dots. It doesn't matter. You know, all you need those four is just to give you some direction as to where where you're going. So you have a reference point and it, it changes as you're doing the design so it's not going to make any difference anyway so this one's numbered from 1 to 32 and it's actually the spaces that are num or the the tabs that are numbered not the actual lines when that's where you're putting it so anyway you're going to need here's your plarn okay now i've got three different colors of plarn this is going to be a three color uh kumihimo bracelet and it's going to have 12 strands Okay, so I need 12 of these. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so I've got 12 of these. And you don't have to have, okay, you don't have to have these bobbins. But I like them. They're silicone and they just, they snap closed and snap open. And they're really nice to hold this. The reason that I recommend having them, though, is because of the blue that I have here, because that's the long one. If you saw my other video where I cut the different kinds of plarn, well, this is the long one, so it's not connected to anything. It's just a very long strand of blue, and that came from the newspaper bag that I had. So uh, those, it, I usually, because it's so thin 
and the color I want the color a little more intense so I always double up on it and then you know of course when you're using it it kind of folds over anyway so it makes it a little brighter color and because of that I have you know I have eight strands because I have four of each of the others here's one I say four, but it's technically, you know, eight strands, but they're connected. You know, it's one of the rounds. Uh, this is a round of white and there are four rounds of white. And then I have four rounds of red. And then, like I said, the strips of the blue, I just have individual strips. So for me, it can be really tricky trying to, you know, keep track of, okay, do I have one or two? And sometimes they kind of pop out of the little notches. So you'll want to make sure that you've got both strands that belong to the same one when you're going with that. Okay. So they go in the same. Anyway, uh, don't put the bobbins on until after you get this thing through, because when I put them together, they're like this. Okay. Stick them through. It's easier to stick them through. You want all the ends that you can get here so it's all nice and even. And then I like to give it a little twist so they kind of blend together. And I get these handy dandy little clamps. Now I get these from Lowe's. They are just a one inch clamp. That's all they are. And they're nice weight. They work really well for Kumihimo. You need to have some kind of weight for your Kumihimo projects because it needs to hold it down while you're working with it so that it keeps the tension okay now i happen to really like these weights because when i have my my project set up first of all the thing doesn't go through the hole in this one and so it's it's just right there and i can hang on to it i like the way that it's kind of like a little handle and i actually usually keep two of them around so as this starts going through and we get the bracelet here I can put a clamp up here on it on the bracelet and I can hang on to that while I'm doing it again gives me a better tension it's a little more even that way okay so I've got all these together does it matter where they are now no but I'm going to force them into submission here they have to go into the right place and see I really like it goes just through enough through there that it'll hold it while you're working on it Okay, here's how we have to set these up. We need two of the white strands or, you know, two of the rounds here. One, two. We need these two. We're going to start with those. And we're going to put those. It does not matter where you put them. Okay, I'm just going to put them over here. <laughs> Why? I don't know. Anywhere. It doesn't matter. They just need to be someplace where you can put two of them side by side. And so I'm trying to find this one. And it does get a little tricky setting them up. Um, if you've worked with many cords, like the one, oh, this is something Plarn has that you're not going to have when you have the other cords because they kind of got in between there. All right. Um, if you've worked with Kumihimo before, you know that sometimes lots of cords can be kind of tricky. Okay, and see here's where I can do, I can do these as I go. Um, it's kind of like rollers, yeah, setting your hair. You just kind of wrap a little bit around and then wrap so it hangs on to it and then wrap the rest. I like to keep them fairly close. You snap them closed when you get done. And then as you need more, you just pull on it gently and it will release more. So, okay, like I said, I like to do these as I go because it really will reduce a lot of the confusion as you're going. But you don't have to have these. I didn't have these for the first few Kumihimo bracelets I did, and I did just fine. The cords do get a little bit mixed up, though. And this keeps them from tangling. If you're going to do a lot of them, like the 24 one that I do with that thick thing, yeah, you're going to want to have, you're definitely going to want to have these because it just gets to be a real mess. Okay. Yep. Just knock my scissors off. All right. Now, the other whites are going to go directly across. 
So if you look at what I had, I put them on either side of this line. So that just gives me a place to start. There. Just so I know they're straight across. But you can eyeball it. Doesn't have to be perfect. All right. Now let's do the reds. Okay. So I need two reds going up. Let's see. This probably takes... Yeah, I was going to say it takes longer to do setting everything up for a Kumihimo braid, but no, it doesn't. Um, it really doesn't. It's not all that long. It doesn't take that that long for you to do. Okay, there we go. All right, so these are going to be somewhere else and, you know, about, I don't know, about there. Because we still have the blue to do. Okay. Now. Before I do the others, I want to get my blues up. One, two, three. Two, three, four. That should give me four up here. Yep, that gives me four. Because each one of the blues, since it's so thin, I want to do two for each one. And I'm going to do one here, one here. Okay, again, you're eyeballing it. You're just leaving enough gap here. That's all you need is just a gap. These are probably, I'll just move them over a little bit more. Who knows? There, a little more of a gap there. Just two or three numbers in between. Okay? And before I do the next, I, I'm just going to set these before I do the bobbins on these. These are going to come over here because I need them straight across from the red. And once you get it set and you get the bobbins on there, yeah, it's going to be a whole lot easier. So now the nice thing, I mean, these kind of can get caught. So you want to make sure that you've got, that's why the bobbins are really nice on here because then you're sure that you've, you don't have one strand of this one and one strand of the other one. So, well, I've got this one. I'm just going to put the bobbin on it right now because... You can always, you know, if it's, if you get it wound up wrong, you can always rewind it any time during the project. So, you can probably even hear the crackling on this one because it really is a much thicker plastic than the others. Oh, well, that wasn't far enough, but that's okay. Setting them up takes the longest time, it really, well... Uh, again, not the longest time. I keep saying that, but it's not. But it just seems tedious because this isn't the fun part necessarily. Mostly you like to set hair, you know, if that's your thing. I'm going to pull this one up just a bit more. There. Yeah, a little bit more. All right, now we're just on the blues. We can do the blues. And we got a couple more whites we got to do so. So at this point, I want to just try to get the two blues that are probably closest together. Doesn't really matter. It'll work out even if they're not. Because sometimes when you're setting up a Kumihimo bracelet, you're <laughs> you're not at all where they are like together. So sometimes you have to really cross over within the setup. But it's okay. It works out. The first few rows on a Kumihimo are kind of icky looking anyway. Just because they're pulling everything together to start with. Oh, that's a little too much. Okay, now you see I did this one when I wrapped it. I did. I kind of wondered because they weren't the same length and they should have been the same length. So go back. It really will help in the long run. Okay. It's just working with this, when you're working with Plarn, you have to work very carefully because it it's not real forgiving. It's, it doesn't like to be stretched. And once you stretch it, you are out of luck. Okay. Trying to keep it same tension so it'll come out the same. Yeah, that's much closer, much closer. So should be good on this one. All right, 
It doesn't have to be perfect either, but if it's closer, it will be. So again, even if you don't, you know, if you don't use these, this part is all immaterial, but then you've got to keep track of where everything is. So fuzz, piece of fuzz in my house. Oh no, <laughs> I got cat hair everywhere. I'm surprised it's not that. Okay. All right. We're getting there. See, we're getting there. We're getting all of them. <laughs> It just does take time and patience, but but it is a lot like rolling hair. If you have long hair, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, although I rarely did that because the curls never stayed in for me, and it was like, no. Nah. Because when I was little, if you wanted curly hair like this, you had to pretty much put it up the night before and then sleep on them all night which is not fun in the olden days I think I was in high school before I got a curling iron and even that yeah they don't work they never worked for me I have that really thin hair very, that's not thin, it's fine, very fine hair that nothing wants to stick in. That's why people laugh at Trump's hair, and it's like, yeah, I understand having blonde, thin hair like that. It's not a lot you could do with it. it, it just has a mind of its own, and it doesn't like to behave itself. You're kind of limited, so anyway. Um, We're getting there. Okay, we got two more to go. Woohoo! Good thing we got two bobbins too. I honestly, the first time I used these, I thought this is ridiculous. This is for the birds. Who would ever use these things? And then, yeah, I, I gave them a chance, and believe me, I really do like them now, and especially for Plarn. I mean, cords are not too bad. I could do them without these with the cords. I don't know that I'd take the time to wrap them all up with the cords for a single bracelet, but for Plarn, it does make it worth your while in the long run. Okay. In my opinion. All right. We're all done. Woo! Party, party, party. They just sound like they're having a happy little party, don't they? Okay, now we got it. Guess what? Now we get to start. Now, we have the red, white, and blue. Okay, we're going to kind of go in that order. Because we're going to start with the red one. And I'm doing this backwards, so upside down. So <laughs> I hope I do it right. Anyway, you take the one on this side. Okay? And you're going to pull it up. Because I don't know what numbers you have on yours. It doesn't matter what numbers they are. So you just take the one on this side, whatever it is. The one on the blue side. You start with red. Go up here and put it next to this one. But you put it on this side. Okay, so from this side to this side, you're staying on the same side. And then you take the one over here, which is on the other side. And you take it straight down and put it on the other side of the one down here. There you go. Now, when you're pulling them down through that little notch there, be especially careful you don't pull it too hard. Because if you do, it'll stretch. Okay? Now, the next thing is we're going, that we have red. Now, we're going to go to white. So, we turn it a little bit. 
we go to white, we take the white on this side and we pull it straight up here. And then we take the white on this side and we go all the way down straight on the blue side here. And then we turn it. So we've had red, white, and blue. Unless you're from France. If you're from France, they do bleu, blanc, et rouge. So they do it like blue, white, and red. <laughs> so, yeah, they because their flag is red, white, and blue too. So we take the one on this side. This is on the white side. We're going to take the white side one and put it up here on the red side of the two blue. And then we take the one over here on this white side and we take it straight down on this side over here, straight down. And then we go to the next one. We take the one on this side, we go straight down, we're over here, and then we take the one over here and bring it up here. Now you can see when I did this, I kind of got them whopper jawed a little bit. So I'm just going to move them over there. <laughs> it's more even. It happens, you know, like I said, uh, I wasn't really, I just put them on here. So then, of course, we go, wow, we have red. We go to white. You put it up on this side. And then we take the one on this side. And we go down and put it over there on this side. Then we turn it. We take the one here. We put it up here next to its buddies. Then we take the one over here and we put it down on this side. Always over there. So we take from this side, we put it down on this side. Then you turn it. You go up from this side. And then you go down from this side. And then you turn it. You go up from this side. See, I think even kids can do this. Then you go down from that side. And then you turn it. You go up from this side. And then you go, whoops. They do get a little fussy down here, but believe me, it's not near as bad as having all those strings. And then you go down on this side. You go up on this side, if you can find the right one. This is where it gets, whoopsie, I pulled up the wrong one. It gets a little tricky when you have individuals, if you don't have these bobbins on them, because it's easy to get like one piece from this and one piece from that. Well, and even more so with the blues. So we go up here and then we take this one and we go down and we turn it. We take this one, we go up, I got a cat behind me who's doing something he's not supposed to be doing, and then you go down. So just a minute, I got to check. Now, I, I need to check on the cat, so I'm going to turn it, and I'm going to take this blue and put it up here, okay? And I'm back. Yeah. <laughs> Fortunately, it was not the cat that likes to eat these plastic strips. It was the other cat because... He's the cat that just has to touch things, everything. He has to touch things, especially if they make noise. He will touch them over and over and over again. So I've got like plastic bags and stuff, and he's just feeling like he needs to touch it all. Now, the reason that I put all three of these up there is because that is what you need to do. If you have to lay this down for any reason, that's what you do. Because you will instantly know when you see that, okay, that means I just took this one up from the bottom. So the next move is to take this down here. And that also means that then I turn it. So you know which direction you're turning. You know what the next move is. That's how you do it. Because you always go the same direction. So you turn it. You take this one up. And if you have to leave it, you leave it like that. And then you come back and you go, oh yeah, that goes there. And then we turn it. <laughs> So that's all you have to do. You just keep doing this and magically a braid will appear. And I will show you that in just a second. 
I'm just continuing on this a little bit with the video because if you're not, if you're new to Kumi Hemo, I find it helpful when I'm doing a new pattern to see the person do it like a zillion times so I can do it along with them. Now this is an easy pattern. There are some patterns that are quite complex. So I probably will not be doing those because I feel like I need to do stuff that's my own pattern. This is just a general pattern that's out there like for anybody. Everybody knows how to do this one. So if you've done any Kumi Hemo, this is like the first one you learn. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna take the red one. Well, the blue one, sorry. We're gonna take the blue, put it up here. And that way, I, see I've got three up there so I can stop and turn it over and look. Let's see what we got. Woohoo, woohoo. Now, it's it's a little striped pattern. It's kind of hard to get there. There we go. Okay. It's a striped pattern. It will end up twisting like this, so it will be a spiral at this point. So I'm going to, through the magic of the camera, I will suddenly have this completely done and show you how to take it off. Okay, here we are, and I've got this much of it done, which is not enough for an entire bracelet. So, I mean, you try to put it around, it's just not gonna reach. It's about two thirds, maybe half, but more like somewhere in between there. <laughs> so you see that these got so short that I had to take the bobbins off. So those aren't on there anymore, but they are on the blue ones because I still have more left. Okay, so I have to add more plarn. So I'm going to do that. It's very easy to do. You just take a piece. So you put it through like this, and then we want to pull the other end through so it ends up making a little knot here. Now at this point, just kind of pull it, just kind of back and forth, but you don't want to pull real hard because you'll, um, you know, cause problems there. So now we have enough. This will be plenty for that one. So we need to do that for all of them. We do exactly the same thing all the way around for all the short ones, and then we roll them back up on our bobbins and we'll be good to go. Okay, so that's what we'll do, and I'll see you back in a little bit. Well, some of them go through better than others, but anyway, so I'll see you in a little bit, and hopefully this time it'll be all done. All right, see ya. Okay, so here we are. We're done. <laughs> now, it's a lot longer than I need, but I wanted to see how far I could go with two strips. So this is how long I got out of two strips. And that would be about a foot. Okay. So I got about a foot long braid out of the two strips for like these, the two loops. And I still have some blue left. So Lots, yeah. Um, the blue kind of surprised me, but that's kind of nice. So it goes a long way. Anyway, all right. So you can see that, you know, I have all these little things here and all of this going on. So what I want to do is I want to get another clamp and I want to put it on here. Of course, I have another clamp here. There. Okay, so... The reason I'm going to do this is because when I take this off, it'll start to unravel if I don't if I don't do this. But I want to take this off first and put it on so I can put it on this direction. Okay, if that makes sense. Anyway, you just flip them out. That's all you have to do. Just pop them out of there. You know, whenever the braid is long enough. Now remember, you want it a little longer than you need. Oops, I forgot. I gotta take these off. Let's take these off. Yep, gotta get rid of those. I took off some of them just because I had to at the very end. And whenever you do like a regular Kumihimo braid, you're always gonna have some that are longer than others. So, anyway. 
All right, there's some pretty cool Kumihimo braids out there, and a lot of them you could probably do with Plarn. It would just all depend. So, all right, there we go. Now we can pull it through, and we want to just clamp it because it will it will start unraveling. And if you use regular cord, the satin cord especially. It will unravel pretty well. Now, if you notice, I've got a little glitch here, okay? This is where one of my strands actually broke. The One of the white strands, it broke, and I kind of wove it in as we went. So you, you can't tell that much if, except for these two things sticking out. And I'm going to show you what to do with those in a minute, but i got to get rid of these because these are annoying. So all we do, hold them together and clip them off. <laughs> Why do I wait until after I clamp it? Well, because these will hold it together just a little bit better until I can get it clamped. Okay, now we've got all our bobbins off. And one of the things I like about these bobbins, by the way, they're called Bob E's. Bob, Bob E's. This is the back of it. And I got it on Amazon. And then... The front has this big warning sticker saying, you know, don't um, <laughs> don't let kids suck on them or something. You know, one of those things that's like, okay, not going to have my kids do that anyway. But anyway, they pop together and so they stick together. It's kind of nice, a good way to store them. So you've got several of them all together. And so I just pop them together there. One, two, three, four, five, six. I like to put them in six because when you're doing kumihimo, you do need to have like an even number and it really needs to be, well, it all depends on the pattern, I guess. Uh, so if you have less than 12, which is what this was, then, you know, it really, they'll call it, by the way, they'll call it a six strand because, like I said, with regular kumihimo, what they do is they take the whole strand, the cord, and then they fold it in half and get two out of it. So, but when we're doing this, we just do singles. Okay, so I'm going to put these away. And I don't need my disc anymore. All right, now, um, again, how long is it? Well, it's pretty long. And we don't need all of it, so we're going to end up cutting it. But the thing about Kumihimo is that it's plastic, and plastic melts. Now, I have a long-handled one of these, <laughs> so I don't burn myself. But, um, you know, I could melt all of this, but I don't need to. I can just, I can cut off as much as I can and, you know, just trim them like this. But you can't get really close, and it'll always stick out there. I don't know. Hopefully you can see it. It's still sticking out. And sometimes, you know, when you're doing this, because oh, you probably can't see that either, there's little pieces of fuzz or maybe very fine cat hairs or something on here. Because the plastic static electricity, it just really does that. So now what we're going to do, if you notice on a lighter, you've got a metal part here, you're going to use that to kind of smash it in. So... What you're going to do is use the lighter, but get be very careful about what you're doing here. So I can, I can get it in the... <laughs> okay, are we ready? Let me just get it a little close to it and smash it in. And you can't see it. So there's no more things sticking out. And I got a little, maybe a little singed there. But you try not to leave it too singed. You just want to get it enough that you can. It melts really easy and very fast. And if you've got little fuzzies, you can do the same with those. You know, just kind of kind of like popping the bubbles on uh, resin, if you've ever done resin. I don't know what I got. Hairs or whatever. It's just the, you know, this, it just picks up things. So if you end up, you know, if you're a pet owner, 
and, or you have fuzzies or whatever the case is if you need to get rid of them just kind of go along the edge and it gets rid of them like I said you can cut them off but you just can't get close enough and it'll always show if you can't so anyway um, now we've got to deal with how long it is you need to know how long how big you want the bracelet and for me my if I get a seven it's pretty tight so that's probably not showing up on there but for me I got big wrists so seven and a half somewhere in that vicinity is kind of tight so I want to stay around there but you can also just pull it around like this and check it so you can see I've got not enough to go around twice once and a half pretty much so all right now also when you first start it doesn't always look very nice down here because especially you know if you don't have them lined up right when you put them in and that's okay it just usually takes a little while an inch or so you know for it to start really picking up and then you'll be okay down here but remember it may unravel just a little bit here at the end so you really want to take what's in the middle because that will be your best that you have and I do have a little bit here that I don't know if you can see it it's kind of like a little bump and that's because that's where the knot is where I tied the two loops together okay it's not real visible unless you're kind of looking for it but there's a knot and there's a knot you can you could probably take this and heat it up a little bit and see if you could press them in they don't stick out very much they're really unless you're looking for them you wouldn't notice so anyway this is what we're going to do we are going to cut these and then we're going to melt them together all right so i go up about yay far and just cut it and immediately right away it starts to unravel that's the problem so we want to scrunch it together now this is going to be hidden by the cap so you won't see it but we do want to have it and it smells like burning plastic which you know get it in there okay be careful you don't burn your fingers when you do that okay all right so now I've got the end and I'm going to be putting an end cap on it now what I use I have these little I got this little kit like this okay it has ribbon ends but this isn't a flat bracelet so you can't use ribbon ends but it does have jump rings and it's got a little chain and some lobster claws now I'm I live by myself so I can't do lobster claws they just like the bane of my existence I hate them I always have but you know I will need the jump rings out of here and uh, we have these this is actually one of these one the same kit that I got on Amazon and I just have like um, you know emptied this one mostly and so I have a little extra space now these are if you look at them <laughs> they're little magnet clasps and they all like to huddle together they're they're, they're very friendly and they like community <laughs> so they're all there together because they really have strong magnets in them now these are six millimeter size they do have bigger ones but um you know i like the clasp to kind of just be undramatic I don't like it being dramatic okay there's a single one so what we're gonna do is we're going to put an end cap on and then we're going to have jump rings to attach this to it so we're gonna use one of those and it wants to roll everywhere so we're going to corral it we're gonna give it a little corral so it stays where it's supposed to be and then we need some end caps and here's another kit that I got and if I recall correctly these are I like the little box it comes in these are 12 millimeter and then you have 8 millimeter and 6 millimeter 
And this one I think is going to have to use the eight here because I'm sure this will be too big and I'm really sure those are going to be too small. So, so now it comes with gold and then it comes with like a, a little darker silver and then it has the bright shiny silver too and a copper and a kind of bronzy look. So um, find ones that you like. Eh, I think I'm going to use the shiny ones because the the ball is shiny, but uh, either one, they're not really that much different, so most people would not notice. Anyway, so I got that, and I, again, like the little kit that it comes in. So anyway, got those. We need those. We need our E6000, kind of important, and I... And we need our jump rings. Oh, yeah, I forgot to get the jump rings out. A couple, you know, pliers. You got to have pliers. So, got to have those to do the jump rings. So, okay. Come here. There's one. And, come here. There's another. All right. Two jump rings. That's all we need. Okay, now we got this all set. We can go ahead, if we want, we can go ahead and put this on there. So, sure, why not, right? It'll help me understand how far I have to go there. All right, so, uh, or you can cut it first. You can do it either way. All right, doesn't really matter. But now, I kind of have gotten in the habit of because that fits right on there. Squeezing that down like that. Because when I push it in, it's going to go around. So, you know, it will get in there. Now, I know a lot of people put the toothpicks in there and all that. And swirl it around. But when you put this in, push it in and swirl it around. And I guarantee all your E6000 is going to go down to the... It's going to go up in here, and it's going to go into the plastic, the plarn. So, there we go. That was easy. Okay. So, there we have that. Now, let's do a little measuring. And I see that I want it about there. So, that's where I'm going to cut this end. Okay, same thing. Ah. I didn't do it fast enough, really, and it's starting to unravel. But I think I can hold it. Got a little... Oh, I'm going to have to trim it up. That's why you got to do it right away. Really do. Oh, great. How my house is going to smell. Whoa. Well, that one got really sticky. <laughs> oh, well, that was my own fault because I didn't do it fast. So we'll stick that aside and I'll get the plastic off of it later. But anyway, so we got that. Put the E6000 in it. And pop it on there. It'll cover the burned parts. You won't even see them or know they're there. Make sure you spin it around a little bit. Oops, close my E6000 because it tends to glob. And let it sit until it dries, okay? And then we will put the little thing on there. Okay, so now we have the elements we're going, ooh, magic. Ooh, look, it's dancing for us. <laughs> anyway, oh, shoot, it just attacked, it attacked my jump ring. <laughs> okay, I opened this jump ring already. Get over there, thank you. I opened this jump, jump ring. Here we go. 
shoot, there it is. I opened this jump ring already because I wanted to show you how it looks when you open it. Now, when you're doing jump rings, they're, they're like this, and you want to open them sideways so it just goes sideways because if you open it like this you're going to have a hard time getting it back to where it needs to be to make it round so you open them sideways and i'll show you how to do that on the other one but let me get this one in there <laughs> to everything sticks to everything which makes it a challenge i mean these little things really are a challenge to put on there because of course they're going to want to stick to this too now i got a little bit of e6000 on the outside there don't worry i glue hates me so, yeah. All right. <laughs> Almost got it. It, yeah, well, I'm, normally I'm not lifting it up for the camera, but I'm trying to do that here for you. All right, so we put it through there. And it really is challenging because it wants to stick to everything. And then we flip it back, and I'm having a hard time getting in there. Okay, this is going to sound weird. i got to take my glasses off. Now I can't see if anything's in focus or not. So I'm just going to have to go with your word. Or just on faith, actually, that it is what it is. All right, here we go. We're just going to take this. And we may have to kind of wiggle it towards each other because we want the end to, to end up together. So there we go. We got one side. Yay. And like I said, don't worry about that E6000. It will come off. I'll worry about it once it's done. See, I got some on my finger. I always do. And I know some people use toothpicks and stuff because they're fancier or whatever. I don't know. I just... I can squeeze it in there so much faster. Okay. So we get it through that one. Bring this around there. <laughs> again <laughs> again. <laughs> all right you just put that through there and put it through here and it really is just they're challenging because they stick so well but you know you want them to stick well you get it to where you need it and there we go ta-da Okay, we rub a little bit of this off. Get rid of the E6000 that's on here because, again, I just, glue and I have a love-hate relationship. I mean, it's necessary, but we don't like each other well. So, come on. There we go. Got it rubbed off. There we go. Now, the nice thing about this is... <laughs> It sticks to everything. That's the nice thing. <laughs> okay, there. You get it just part part way around, and it finds the other half. So that's what I really like about these because I just I have trouble, and you get it close enough, and it finds itself. So <laughs> that's why I love those little things. They're magnetic. They they come in different colors, and you know, I have three different colors that they're... Well, technically it's four because there's one that's bright silver and then the regular silver. And then there's kind of like a... I don't know, pewter? I don't know. I don't know colors. Anyway, so there you go. There's my Plarn bracelet. And it was just grocery bags. So a great way to recycle things. They end up looking pretty cool. And you can do different colors. I mean... Like I said, with the browns, I think I want to do a brown one later. Maybe that's what I'll do with the chevron and make a brown one for the chevron. So there we go. That's what I've got for you on this one. I hope you found it informative. I'll put links down below to these things if you want them. I will tell you that, you know, if you're making jewelry to sell, they're not really the highest quality, you know, the real sturdy ones, but they are inexpensive. So um yeah you're probably wondering what would, what do you do with your jewelry well i give it to relatives and people so i usually give it away just because i don't want to have to package things up and send them to people to sell so 
you know, anyway, that's what I've got for you. Again, I want to show you. It looks pretty cool. And there's a real easy variation on this where you can get one of those to kind of stand out more than the others, uh, the other two. And that's kind of neat too. So there we go. Relatively inexpensive and fun to make. Gives you something to do and fairly easy. So that's what I've got for you on this one. I want to thank you for stopping by and I'll see y'all later.